Hello everybody, this is King Alfie, and today I'm going to be taking you through 7 steps to optimize your Minecraft performance. Today we're going to be running on a fresh version of Minecraft. I've completely deleted my .minecraft folder and reinstalled it, that way we can take things from the top. So, it's important to know that optimization isn't necessarily installing a bunch of programs and altering your settings. You need to understand how things work first. And that brings us to point one. Determining your maximum FPS is definitely the best place to start because if you don't know what your maximum is, then how are you going to optimize your game? You don't know what you need yet. The reason I bring this up first is because I've heard multiple people brag about having 2 or 3 or 400 FPS on their game and how that makes their game run better than other people's. Whereas this is not the case at all because your hardware can't actually handle that much for the most part. So there are two things that you're going to need to look at to determine your maximum FPS. Number one is your GPU or your graphics card. However, pretty much every graphics card out there can handle whatever your maximum FPS is. The other thing you're going to need to look at is your display, so your monitor, because your monitor is going to have what is called a refresh rate. So that is the maximum amount of frames that it can show on screen per second. So I'm going to jump over to a web page here. This guy right here is my monitor, the LG UN500. So if we scroll down to the specs, you'll see that the refresh rate on my monitor is 60 hertz. So that means I can have a maximum of 60 frames per second shown on my monitor. So there's really no sense in having any more than 60 frames per second. So now I know where I need to optimize my game to. And for those of you running laptops out there, it's hard to figure out through your specification pages what your refresh rate is. But unless you have like a super expensive MSI computer, your refresh rate is most likely 60 as well. VSync is a very important setting because your graphics card is smart. If you look in the top corner there, you'll see that my FPS is hovering around 60 and it never goes above that because my graphics card knows that the refresh rate of my monitor is 60, so it doesn't want to give me any more frames per second than that. However, if we go to our options and our video settings and we turn VSync off, you'll immediately notice that my FPS starts going up. So you may think that's a good thing, but like I said earlier, that doesn't really help you in the long run because you're not going to see those FPS. And also, as soon as you start getting more FPS than your monitor is capable of handling, you can become victim to screen tearing. So screen tearing looks a little like this. And yeah, it's not exactly a pretty sight. So basically what's happening here is your monitor is trying to display more than one frame at a time, and it's overlapping them. So you get this weird effect, and the more frames it tries to display at once, the weirder the effect will be. This doesn't actually have any effect on your game, but it looks terrible, and you don't want to see screen tearing all the time. It's impossible to predict, because your graphics card will try to filter it out, but for the most part, I would suggest leaving VSync on unless you have incredibly low FPS, in which case you can go ahead and turn it off. And as long as you're not getting more FPS than your monitor is capable of handling, go for it. Downloading Optifine is something that I would suggest you do regardless of whether you need optimizations or not because it just adds some cool features to the game, such as being able to zoom into things and connected glass textures. It's just a great mod to have. So to get it, head to optifine.net, link will be in the description, and hit the downloads button. It'll bring you to the latest version, which in my case is Minecraft 116.4. Hit download and it'll bring you to kind of an in-between page. Just wait the five seconds or whatever and hit the skip button. There we go. And then download it. That'll give you the optifine.jar file. So as soon as that's downloaded, click on that and it'll open up this installer. Just hit install and it'll do everything for you. So Optifine has been successfully installed. Now let's launch Minecraft again. So when I open the launcher, you'll see that I have an Optifine file now. Open that. It's going to give you an error message. Just click past it. 
and you have Optifine installed now. Now if you head to your options and head to video settings, you'll see that you have a bunch more options to play with. Just kind of alter these until you have optimal settings. So make sure that you're hovering around your refresh rate so you can turn off different particles, you can adjust the performance with different math algorithms and stuff that is built into Optifine. And also you can adjust the quality in here. So you can turn your textures from fancy to fast, etc., etc. Now you may notice that up here we have max frame rate and that's where vSync is now because that's no longer an option. So my suggestion would be set your max frames per second to whatever your refresh rate is and that's going to act the same as vSync. You can set it higher if you want, but once again you're opening yourself up to screen tearing. Adjusting your Minecraft RAM storage is usually a good idea because RAM is your short-term storage on your computer. It's where files can be written and accessed quickly, and this will definitely help for stuff like large amount of entities, world generation, all that kind of stuff. So it is going to help you client-side. So to do that, head to installations on your Minecraft launcher and find the version of Minecraft that you want to alter. So in my case, I want to alter my Optifine version. So click the three dots on the side here and hit edit and it'll bring you to this page right here. So hit more options and then scroll down to the JVM arguments here. So there's just a lot of code in here and I'm not going to explain what it all means because to be honest, I don't understand what it all means either. But this guy right at the beginning here is what you need to know. So XMX is the max amount of RAM that your Minecraft can use, and it's set to two gigabytes by default. So I'm going to alter that to six gigabytes. On my machine, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, and my suggestion would be never set the max RAM to more than half your system's RAM, because your computer's going to need RAM to do other things, like run Windows or Mac or whatever you're running. Um, so make sure you leave enough storage for the rest of your computer. So I'm going to go with 6, hit save, and then the next time you launch your game, it'll be launched with 6 gigabytes of RAM rather than 2. Minecraft is what's known as a single-threaded game. So what that means is, for the most part, it is only going to use a single core of your CPU. So there are going to be other operations that run on other cores of your computer, such as lighting engine and garbage collection, but the bulk of your game is going to run on a single core of your CPU. So having a processor with multiple cores isn't necessarily going to help you much in this case. So let me give you an example here. This right here is my processor, the Intel i7-8700K, and it has six cores and runs at 3.7 gigahertz. So let's compare that to one of the top of the line i9 processors, the 10th gen. So this guy right here has 18 cores, which is absolutely insane. And it runs at three gigahertz, which is also insane for 18 cores. However, for a single threaded game such as Minecraft, you wanna look at the single core performance over the amount of cores. This is going to be great for a multi-threaded game, but not for Minecraft. So in this case, my processor is actually better, even though it is five years old at this point. But that is something you want to keep in mind when building a PC for the purposes of playing Minecraft. I'm not saying that this processor would be bad, it just won't perform quite as well as mine in this case. This one gets a lot of people, especially if you are playing on a laptop but make sure you're using the proper GPU to play your game because if you're not, then you're gonna notice performance drops as well. So if you hit F3 here and you look over in the corner, you're gonna see which graphics card you're using. So in my case, I'm using my RX 590 to play Minecraft, which is what I want. However, especially laptops, if they have an Intel processor, will default to using the Intel integrated graphics. And you'll see that right here if you start up the game and you have that as your default graphics card, which is just no good. So this is one that I can't really show you how to fix because it depends on what graphics card you have in your computer. But basically what you're gonna need to do is head to whatever control panel you're using for 
Radon or GeForce or whatever it may be and switch that graphics card to your default because by doing that, if you close the game and reopen, you'll be switching that to your default graphics card for the game and every other game in that case too because likelihood is every game on your computer is using your Intel graphics at that point, which is just no good. So make sure to change that up if you hit F3 and you notice that you're using the wrong graphics card. The last thing I'm going to cover today is server side issues and unfortunately there's not a whole lot you can do on that front because most issues come from the actual host of the server rather than the client side but there are a few things you can do to optimize that as well. The biggest thing is what network you're connected to for your internet because you may have something that looks a little like this where you have a regular network and you have a 5G network by the same name. So your instinct is going to be to pick the 5G network because your brain is going to think, hey, 5G is better than 2.6G. And in the case of a phone or a tablet, that is true. But in the case of a computer, for the most part, that is not true because most network adapters are actually calibrated to pick up the 2.6G signal better than the 5G. So you'll find that if you switch from your 5G network to your 2.6G network, your connection is actually going to be a lot better. And that's not just for Minecraft, that's for everything internet related in general. So I would definitely suggest doing that on your PC unless your network card specifically says that it runs better on 5G. Well guys, that's my video for today. I hope I helped some of you guys out now that you know you don't need 150 FPS to run the game perfectly and you can do fine with just 60. I hope you guys will look into your settings and start altering some things because a lot of optimization is not just performance but also your experience of the game. And you give up so much by turning off stuff like particles or switching from fancy graphics to fast graphics. You want to make sure that you get the full Minecraft experience. So look into your settings, see what you can do to optimize it, find out what your refresh rate on your monitor is, install Optifine, all of that good stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also check out my Enigma SMP Let's Play series. I have a lot of fun on there with a lot of cool people. So make sure to check that out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later!